COVID-19 cases confirmed in several schools in the country, the teachers' union president expressing concerns about the numbers of suspected cases, and police needs your help in solving another homicide. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lissy Bastian with your JCN Evening News for this Monday, April 19th. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, educational officials confirming several schools have been hit with COVID-19 virus. Education Minister Jeffrey Lloyd confirming with reporters this morning three cases. Now three schools here in the capital were dismissed at noon, according to the ministry's Facebook page, including C.V. Bethel Senior High, Sihar Walker Senior High, and Carlton Francis Primary School. Now education officials did not give a reason behind these early dismissals. Our Laurentia Smith spoke with the Education Minister this morning. Here is that report. I am advised this morning that there were three cases uh, over the last four or five days, individual schools. I am getting the reports on those as soon as I do. I will share them with you. Now, Minister Lloyd did not indicate whether those schools are in the capital or on a family island. Neither did he confirm if it was a staff member or student. Despite these cases, the minister says he's not concerned about a possible outbreak within the school system when it comes to face-to-face -face learning, and here's why. We are doing what the health officials have asked us to do, and that is to maintain all of the protocols that we are required to maintain social distance, wash your hands, wear your masks, and so on. This is an issue of personal responsibility. Naturally, we want to ensure that as much as possible, all of our citizens were able to get their vaccines. Within the last several weeks, health officials have predicted a third wave with more than 100 plus cases confirmed over the weekend. Ask what impact a third wave would have on the remainder of the academic school year and the upcoming national exams. He says this. Any wave is going to have an impact and I'm sure that the health officials will guide us as to what we must do in terms of our response. So, we wouldn't even want to talk. I don't want to be putting out them negative kind of vibes out in the atmosphere about no way. We are moving forward to a place where we can get back to our normal, as normal as is possible in this, what you might call the post-COVID environment. Due to the global pandemic, the public school year started later than usual. I'm Laurencia Smith for JCN News. Now, while education officials say three schools have been hit with the virus, Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson's alleging that there are currently six schools in New Providence that have positive cases of COVID-19. There are positive cases at the following schools. L.W. Young Junior High, C.R. Walker Senior High, H.O. Nash Junior High, Gavin Tynes Primary, T.G. Glover Primary, and Carlton Francis Primary. We note that the majority of the cases are students as young as five years old. What is concerning for us though, is that some principals and the Ministry of Education officials are not forthcoming with the information about the cases and or they are delayed in informing the teachers, parents and the union of suspected cases or confirmed cases. Mrs. Wilson, in a voice note sent to JCN's news team, demanding that teachers be informed of such circumstances in a timely manner, that the COVID-19 team addresses teachers and staff members, that contact tracing be done, and that those teachers who may have been exposed be tested. The alleged withholding of information by the Ministry of Education's officials is unacceptable. This is a matter of urgency and health and the ministry of education is obligated to follow the protocols and inform the various stakeholders teachers have been advised to protect themselves so the bahamas union of teachers we are saying to our teachers protect yourselves teachers safety comes first according to mrs wilson the but has made contact with the permanent secretary of the ministry of education who has confirmed that the ministry of health and environmental health services are actively involved at this time she says the but will continue to monitor these schools and all schools in the bahamas Shifting gears, a body discovered in the early hours this morning leave police investigating the country's latest homicide. The man was found with stab wounds about the body. With no details on the identity of the victim, police are seeking the public's assistance with identifying the victim and the alleged attacker. For more on this latest homicide, we go to JCN's Leah Cooper. 
Homicide number 40 on the books for the country leaving police here in the capital investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of a man found unresponsive in the Collins Avenue area. Head of the Central Detective Unit, Chief Superintendent Shanta Knowles, was on the scene and provided the details on the discovery this morning. Shortly before 4 a.m., our police control room received reports that a male was lying in the street at Collins Avenue, just in the area of Six Terrace. Once officers and medical personnel arrived on the scene, they confirmed that the man was there unresponsive. Upon examination of him, they discovered that he had a, an apparent stab wound to his body. He was pronounced dead on scene. The chief superintendent adds that it appears the body had not been there very long, with officers estimating that he was there for about an hour before police arrived on the scene. That said, Chief Superintendent Knowles says police believe someone may have seen exactly what transpired. Now, considering this crime possibly took place within curfew hours, she sends this message to the public. We ask people to, to please obey the emergency orders. The curfew is lifted until 5 a.m., and officers are patrolling the streets, and should they see you, it is possible that you could be given a citation for being out during the time when the emergency order is, the curfew orders are in effect. And so I'm asking people to pay attention to, to pay attention and to obey the emergency orders as they are in place at this time. Asked if police intend to beef up their presence during curfew hours, she says this. It is always our intention to keep our manpower on the streets and that's what we're doing you have to understand or we have to take the uh, appreciate the fact that uh, crimes occur when there is an opportunity so if people see that the police are not in a particular area at this time they take advantage of that opportunity it does not say that we our officers are not on the street it's just that they are not particularly there at the time that an incident occur and so again we ask people in, in the community to be responsible to obey the, the emergency orders, but you also got to be responsible for your own safety. She says police are working with limited information at this time, but police are asking members of the public who may have any information to call Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS, the Central Detective Unit at 502-9991 or 2, or contact the nearest police station. Reporting for JCN News, I'm Leah Cooper. The Aircraft Accident Investigation Authority providing an update on that plane that crashed in shallow waters near the South Bimini International Airport on Friday night, which claimed the life of a 20-year-old and seriously injuring another. In a statement, the authority indicates that it was notified at 10.48 p.m. on Friday of the crash, which occurred shortly after takeoff from runway 10. A team of investigators from both the AAI and Civil Aviation Authority Bahamas was dispatched. To date, investigations uncovered that the aircraft, a Piper Navajo with United States registration, crashed at approximately 10.10 10 p.m. The aircraft was destined for Opelika, Florida, with two persons, father and son, on board the aircraft at the time. The son succumbed to his injuries sustained and the father was airlifted to New Providence. Now, up to the time of the statement's release, he was being prepared to, for transfer to the U.S. to receive medical treatment. The pilot was in possession of a valid USA commercial pilot license with appropriate ratings for the aircraft as well as a valid medical certificate. The statement also notes that the Royal Bahamas Defense and Police Forces, as well as OPBAT and local boaters, were instrumental and timely in the rescue and recovery of the occupants of the crash, arriving within two minutes of notification. Efforts are also underway to retrieve the aircraft from its current location to secure it at a facility where further analysis can be conducted. The AAIA is on site and will continue its investigation to determine the cause of the crash. You're watching JCN News. When we return, police identify three more of those killed in Thursday's shooting massacre, a look at COVID-19 cases over the weekend, and more vaccine sites open. Stay with us.